In this Tech 5, we're gonna talk about how to get started with Docker and why you should spend some time learning it. So let's kick things off by talking about what exactly is Docker? Well, if you've ever run into the works on my machine syndrome, where you have some code, works great on your laptop or development box back in your office or home, and then you move it to QA test and everything breaks. Server settings were different, version of the server was different, missing environment variables, security was different, who knows? Lots of things can go wrong. Development these days isn't just as simple as developing code. We also have to, of course, worry about the deployment between the environments and making sure that in addition to the code, we have everything else right. That's where Docker steps in. Docker will allow me to develop against real servers on my local machine. And that way, when I'm ready to move to different environments, I'm gonna be moving the exact same servers between the environments, not just my code, but also my servers, my security, my environment variables, and so on and so forth. Now to get started with Docker, you're gonna be using images and containers, and I'm gonna show how to work with those here. So the first thing you'll have to do is run off to docker.com and then either install the Mac or Windows CE version, Community Edition. Now they also have an enterprise version as well. The CE version is free and as mentioned, it runs on Mac, Windows, and it also runs on Linux. In fact, that's where it kind of came out of. Now once you have that installed, you'll see a little whale icon as you see here, or in Windows, it'll be in the bottom right hand tray. And this is your Docker engine that's now running. So I can now use this by going to a command prompt, and if I just type Docker, you'll see a bunch of commands. Now, if you're new to this, don't let this intimidate you. There's a lot of them, but quite honestly, there's only a handful you would need to really learn if you're a developer. So I'm gonna show you a few of these. So the first one I'm gonna do is called Docker Pull, and what this will do is pull down an image, which is a starting point for my server I want. And it's gonna pull that down locally to my laptop so I can run it. Now this is not a virtual machine image. This is what's called a layered file system. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna pull down an Nginx Alpine image. This is a very small one. And this is a reverse proxy that runs typically on port 80 and then forwards any dynamic requests to backend servers. So that's your first command. I've now pulled this down. And if I do the next command, Docker images, you should see this right up here. We have, there it is, Nginx Alpine. Looks like it's about 15.5 meg. So now I have Nginx as a blueprint, but I wanna actually run it now as a container so I can hit it in my browser locally. Well, I can do that by saying docker run. I'm gonna run this in what's called detached mode. So it lets go of my console once I'm done. And I'm gonna run it on port 8080 externally. This is what we'll hit in the browser but port 80 is what Nginx actually runs on inside of this thing called a container. Now think of a container as everything you need at runtime to successfully run your app. It's your server, it's security, it's environment variables, it's your code, everything. Now with this particular demo, it's only gonna run their code, but with a little more work, and maybe in a different video I'll cover that, we can actually link it to our local code and develop locally, or I could build a custom image and then run that with Nginx. And that would have my code in that custom image and container. But for this one, we're just gonna say Nginx Alpine, and we'll hit enter, and you'll get back an ID. Now this is the container ID. We can see it's running by saying docker ps, and if you wanna see all containers running or not, you can say dash A. And there we go. So it looks like it's been up for about 10 seconds, and it's forwarding port 8080 to 80. So to test this out, let me go ahead and open up a browser. We'll go to localhost 8080, and there we go. I now have Nginx fully running on my system. And don't even really have to know what Nginx is, obviously, to get this running. But it's a very powerful static file type server and reverse proxy. So now if we want to stop it, we could say docker stop, and then you'll notice an ID here. I'm going to say F2, and this is going to now stop the container. So if we do docker ps-a, you'll notice it's exited over here. And now we can remove it. So I can say docker remove, and then we can do the F2. Now it's completely gone, as far as the container goes, off my machine. Now the image is still there. If I do docker images again, there it is. Now look at that. We have, uh, what is that, 98 or 962? So we can say docker remove 
image, RMI, then we can do 962, and now that image is completely off of my machine. If we come back up, you won't see it here. There's a node one, but Nginx is gone. Now, that is a brief run through of some of the key commands, how you can pull down an image, how you can get it running as a container. There's much, much more you can do. Extremely exciting stuff. I, I use this all the time to make sure that my production environment and my dev are exactly the same so that when I do move my codewithdan.com site and blog, everything works exactly as I expected. So thanks for tuning in to this Tech 5.